Hey, friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, let's dig into the library. The library is such a key component of the Logic experience because it allows us to organize and access different presets, patches, channel strip settings, plugin settings, And I want to show you how you can make the best use of the library for your own patches and presets, but also how you can mix and match different elements of different patches, such as just the plugins of one patch and combine it with the sends of another. And additionally, I'll show you how to find the patches and channel strip settings and everything that you saved within the finder in case you decide to do some housekeeping later on. Logic provides us three different ways of saving different elements of our channel strips. We can either save plugin settings that we've created or we've fine-tuned as plugin presets, or we can even save an entire channel strip worth of plugins, or we can save an entire channel strip worth of plugins, the settings that we've set within those plugins, and even sends to different auxiliary channel strips as well. First, let's open the library. You can either use key command Y or go right up to this filing cabinet icon right here in the left-hand corner. And depending on what the library is focused on, we're seeing different styles of presets or settings. And you can even change the focus of the library by directing its attention to specific plugins, instruments, or settings. In this case, let's select this base patch right here. And we can see that it's pointing right now with this blue little triangle at the channel strip setting menu, which we'll dig into a little later. We can also point it at the arpeggiator here in the MIDI effects section. And we can see all of the presets or plugin settings for this arpeggiator. If we open the arpeggiator and dig into the plugin setting menu, it's identical. So you have two different ways to access the presets of this MIDI plugin. We can also direct the library's attention to particular instruments. In this case, Alchemy, we're looking at a base preset here, Astrofunk. If we open Alchemy, we can see right within here, Prismatica, base, Astrofunk. And if we navigate to the left here, we can see the different categories of presets. We can also direct the library's attention to specific plugins. So the channel EQ, Overdrive, FatFX. And if we open the FatFX, we can see the same exact different preset folders, bass, drums, rhythmic, or synth. And we can even select from within the library. And it's great. It allows us to organize and access our different presets and patches. But what's the difference between plugin settings, channel strip settings, and patches? Plugin settings are specific to the plugins themselves. So if we save a FatFX plugin setting, it's specific to that plugin, the FatFX. Whereas a channel strip setting includes all of the plugins on a channel strip. And this includes MIDI plugins as well. Whereas a patch includes all of the plugins, all of their settings, plus any send routing that you've created as well for that channel strip. And we can even include track stacks as well. And I'll demonstrate that momentarily. So first let's go into maybe the FatFX. And let's save this as a plugin preset or setting. If we go up to the plugin setting menu, we can go down to save as, and this will open the finder specific to the fat effects. And this is where user generated presets are saved. Now I recommend creating folders wherever you can because it'll help just give a little organization to your workflow. In this case, we'll call this heavy base and we'll create, and then we'll call this fat effects heavy base one. Save it. And now if we go into the plugin setting menu, we have a folder of our own making above all the existing presets. So you can see FatFX heavy base number one. And we can see it saved within the library as well. Moving on to the channel strip settings, we can do the same thing. All of these plugins that I've created and saved, we can save this as a channel strip so we can refer to it in the future. Just by clicking the setting menu right at the top of the channel strip, And just like before, we go down to save channel strip setting as. Again, I recommend creating folders within these folders for easy organization. We'll just call this my heavy base folder. And we'll call this our heavy base channel strip. Save it. All right, so we can see we have Alchemy. We have the arpeggiator. We have some plugins. If I create a new track, new software instrument track, and we'll just create an empty channel strip. If we go over here, Under user channel strip settings, we have heavy bass, heavy bass, and it's saved Alchemy, the arpeggiator, and our plugins with the settings. Cool. And those of us who are maybe eagle-eyed, maybe are noticing that there's a slight difference in terms of the EQ here. We can see this looks bigger, but 
if we just take a look here, this is set to linear 12, and it looks like my channel strip setting has saved the resolution of this channel EQ at linear 60, so good to know. And we can also access the channel strip settings by clicking on the setting field at the top of the channel strip, navigating down to our folder, and there it is. Lastly, patches combines all of these different elements plus more. I'm going to now create two new sends, 25, which will place a delay on, and 26, where we'll place a reverb. And we'll even adjust the send levels here. Cool. So we have Alchemy with a MIDI plugin, with some other plugins, plus some send field routing to a reverb and delay. Let's save this as a patch. To do that, we're going to navigate to the library, click on the Save button, and within this Patches folder, Instrument, we're going to save this as Heavy Bass. And let's create a folder as well, so we'll call this Heavy Bass. Save it. Okay. Now let's open a new software instrument track. So let's now navigate to the library under User Patches, Heavy Bass, and we can see everything is included plus our sends, the send level. They're sending to the delay, sending to the reverb. But check it out. Let's open a new project and do the same exact thing. Go to File, New, close this down, don't save. And let's once again open a software instrument, open the library, go to User Patches, Heavy Bass, Heavy Bass. Now here things are going to be a little different. If we open the mixer, we can see that we have our MIDI plugin, our instrument, our different effects. And we can see that the sends are, include bus 25 and 26, but they're not actually routed to any auxiliary channel strips with the plugins that we've specified. And this is one particular quirk when it comes to saving patches. Even though a lot of the logic presets include sends with auxiliary channel strips, for user-generated patches, they're not included. In this case, we're gonna wanna create a track stack. So if I go to bus nine, bus 10, and we'll do the same thing. We'll open up our Delay Designer. We'll open up Chromaverb. And now we're gonna wanna create track lanes for each of these auxiliary channel strips. So we'll call this Delay. We'll call this Verb. I'm gonna use Key Command Control T to create these track lanes in the main tracks area. But you can also go to Options and go to Create Tracks for Selected Channel Strip. You just have to select them and then click on that function. And then from here, we're gonna select everything and I'm going to use Shift-Command-G to create a track stack, or you can go to Track and go down to Create Track Stack. And we'll create a summing stack, and we'll call this the Heavy Bass Stack. Cool, let's now save this as a patch. So we'll save, and we'll call this Heavy Bass Stack in this folder, save, and then open a new project, close this down. Once again, Software Instrument, Go to the library, user patches, and we've chosen our stack. And if we open the stack, you see right here, everything has been included within the stack. The different buses leading to the reverb and the delay, plugins, so on and so forth. So this is the way that you go about saving sends with auxiliary channel strips and plugins attached to them. Save them as a track stack. Now, how do we combine different elements of a patch without adjusting other elements? For example, let's choose our Alchemy instance with our plugins. And now I'm gonna to go to this gear right down here. And I'm going to enable patch merging. And what this allows us to do is to be selective about what we wanna change when we are changing the different patches or presets. Perhaps I'm very happy with my sends and I wanna keep that delay designer and chroma verb. If I click here, now when I adjust the patch for this channel strip, our routing will stay the same. So check it out, we'll pick studio strings, we'll pick studio cellos. And just like that, we've kept our bus routing. Now let's say I wanna keep these audio effects because I'm happy with them. Turn that off. We'll go to synthesizer, bass, bass talk. Now we've kept everything here. And if I wanna include the instruments, let's go to arpeggiator, acoustic, and look at that. Everything has been saved, the instrument, the plugins, and the routing. All we've changed is just the MIDI effects. This allows us to be as selective as we want when we're switching between different patches. 
Cool, so we've covered a lot of ground. The only piece left really is in case you ever want to access these different patches, channel strip settings, plugin settings from the finder because you've decided that, you know, just a setting or a patch isn't something you want anymore. In that case, let's open the finder, head up over to go, hold option and click, depending on what kind of Mac you're working with. With my MacBook on Catalina, I don't need to hold option for some reason, but then we're gonna navigate to music, audio music apps, and right within here, we have channel strip settings, we have patches and plugin settings. So if we go to channel strip settings here and just navigate around, we can see heavy bass under instrument. So if I decide that I don't want this anymore, I can delete it. If we go to patches, take a look around, once again, heavy bass, or go to plugin settings and navigate to the plugin. So fat effects, heavy bass, and let's get rid of it. This was a really dense video, but it's really important for understanding the library. There's so much versatility, there's so much organizational power behind it, and really just boils down to getting to know the language and the circumstances for saving plugin settings, channel strip settings, and patches. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm posting new emails, videos, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much, and I'll see you tomorrow.